The orbs are Lockheed Martin's hypersonic inertial confined compact fusion reactor. They've got their compact fusion reactor in there. I know because the exact form of fusion they're doing, it has one flaw. It has an ejection of ions on a single path. And in that specific condition, they say that could be used for propulsion. That is exactly what they're using it for. It's exactly what they're doing. They took the form of fusion where there's a gap where the electrons shoot out through a path and they go, oh, we can use that for energy generation and we can turn it into a drone. That was perfect for what they wanted to do it for. And what do we call that form of fusion? We call it inertial electrostatic confined fusion. That's what we call it. Inertial electrostatic confinement fusion set up in operation 2002, right? And this is the same time right here. This is the same time that the NASA breakthrough physics propulsion thing was going on with Hal Pudoff, Eric Davis, all those guys. This was one of the terms I was Googling from Friedward Winterberg's uh, textbook, gas dynamic energy focusing. Okay. What the heck is gas dynamic energy focusing? So I started looking through this and it's basically just like how to use same kind of concept, how to use the plasma moving around for Lorentz forces and how to concentrate that energy down to a small region in, in a gas. And this led me to a video, Lockheed Martin's compact fusion reactor. And when I saw the video, I just said, okay, if this video is legit, I just found the orbs. Using a magnetic bottle. The bottle is able to handle extremely hot temperatures, reaching hundreds of millions of degrees. The heat energy created using this compact fusion reactor will drive turbine generators by replacing the combustion chambers with simple heat exchangers. In turn, the turbines will then generate electricity or the propulsive power for a number of applications. Modern turbojet engines work under a basic premise, to suck in air from the front, compress it, and ignite it with fuel as it passes through a turbine at temperatures of about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, producing thrust on its way out the nozzle. Similarly, turbofan engines split the incoming air into two. One part goes into the core compressor, while the rest activates the propeller and adds a bit more thrust and velocity. However, the combustor part of the existing engines could be replaced by heat exchangers to produce the same thrust with no fuel. They just said right there, you can ex you can remove the combustor and exchange it with a heat exchanger. That's what they've done in the MH370 videos in the orbs. Those orbs don't have a combustor inside of them. They are using a heat exchanger. Why? Because they need to lower the temperature. They're producing fusion at the middle and then they're sucking that heat out and turning it into electricity. And they're, that's how they're producing a huge, huge amount of electricity. These things are extremely advanced. And here you go, here's Lockheed Martin's patent. Lockheed Martin patented what the company calls encapsulating magnetic fields for plasma confinement. According to the official document, the machine will confine the reaction up to 2,000 times better than any current system. 2,000 times better than any current system. Do you know what the number one thing is for why we don't have fusion right now? It's called confinement time. The ability to keep the plasma consistent, stable, and confined. And right there, their patent says they can do it 2,000 times better than currently publicly available means. And they aren't lying because those plasma orbs right there are 2,000 times better confined than any no, known form of fusion at the moment. And that's from 2014. That's from 2014. Even more interestingly, the design will allow for the construction of much smaller fusion reactors than pre- Boom, look at that bad boy right there. Friedwart Winterberg, I've been reading some of his other papers as well. This is part of the reason why I haven't finished his textbook yet. I'm getting sidetracked on side quests. Concentric, spherical, ring formations that's what's going on inside of the mh370 video in the orbs it's not just a tube it's not just a tube it's ring magnets 
concentric ring magnets that are super conductive. They're super conductive. Why are they super conductive, chat? Because what do superconducting magnets do? They repel magnetic fields. They push the magnetic field away. Why? What does that do? It makes the magnetic field more powerful the further away you are. Now, why would that be useful? If you're trying to confine a plasma into a region of space, you want the magnetic field to be more powerful the further away from the center you get. Why? Because that makes it impossible for the plasma to escape. It creates a, what should we call it? How about a magnetic bottle? You create a magnetic bottle where the plasma cannot escape it. What would you call that? I'd probably call that a plasma orb. They're using super powerful electro, super conducting electromagnets, just like the ones Ning Li and Popklinov were working on. Ones that can achieve beyond 20 Tesla. Fusion Reactor 110 has novel magnetic field configurations that exhibit global MED stability has a minimum of particle losses via open field lines, uses all of the available magnetic field energy, and has a greatly simplified engineering design. Basically, their compact fusion reaction explaining how they're able to produce this compact fusion reactor, fusion research at this small level. Okay, these were the sources. What does that say right there? This is Lockheed Martin's compact fusion reactor slides from their own thing. These are the different versions and advancements that they're working on. What does T7 say? DD reactor conditions demonstration. T8 says DT ignited reactor demonstration. Um, those are the exact same, same things that Friedwart Winterberg was talking about are required for the thermonuclear detonations. Those are the exact same fuel sources that Friedwart Winterberg was talking about for thermonuclear detonations. I'm just pointing that out. There they are, right there. DT or DD. We better, we better memorize those acronyms. I have a feeling they're going to become quite handy for us. So this is all about Lockheed Martin Skunk Works compact fusion reactor. And it says it first became public knowledge in 2014. Well, 2014 was a very good year for disclosure of extremely advanced technology, it turns out. History is going to remember the year 2014 pretty fondly, I think, when it comes to uh, technology advancements. The work we have done today verifies our models and shows that the physics we are talking about, the basis of what we are trying to do is sound. Jeff Babioni, Skunk Works vice president, said, this year, we are constructing another reactor, T5, which will be significantly larger and more powerful reactor than our T4. Um, let's scroll down. Let me see what happened here. Oh, yeah, here's the design. Look at this. Superconducting ring magnets. The superconducting coils more efficiently generate magnetic field to contain heat and pressure of the reaction. The problem with tokamaks is that they can only hold so much plasma, and we call that the beta limit, measured as the ratio of plasma pressure to the magnetic pressure. The beta limit of the average tokamak is low, only about 5% or so of the confining pressure. Comparing the torus to a bicycle cycle, he says, if they put too much in, eventually their tire will burst. So to operate safely, they don't go close to that. The CFR, the Compact Fusion Reactor by Lockheed Martin, will avoid these issues by tackling plasma confinement in a radically different way. A radically different way. What do you think they're going to do, chat? What do you think they're going to be? Instead of constraining the plasma within tubular rings in the donut, a series of superconducting coils will generate a new magnetic field geometry in which the plasma is held within the broader confines of the entire reaction chamber. What does that mean? The plasma will just be freely suspended. That's what that means. The plasma will be confined by the magnetic field alone. 
So for us, instead of a bike tire expanding into the air, we have something more like a tube that expands into an ever stronger wall. The system is therefore regulated by a self-tuning feedback mechanism, whereby the farther out the plasma goes, the stronger the magnetic field pushes back to contain it. The CFR is expected to have a beta limit ratio of one. We should be able to go beyond 100% or more. And they said the beta limit is the, how much plasma they can hold. So what they're saying is their fusion can condense plasma 20 times or more better than the public's tokamak reactors. 20 times or more, probably 2,000 times more. Have they figured out fusion? Yeah, they figured fusion out, chat. I think they might have figured it out. Just, just a hunch, chat. Just a hunch. The CFR design could eventually be small enough to fit inside of a shipping container. It's smaller than that. But still be able to power a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier or up to 80,000 homes. 80,000 homes. What did I tell you about the dense plasma fusion ball focus that Frank Mead was working on? Gigawatts of excess energy. This is definitely it. This is definitely it. This is the plasma ball fusion focus thing that Frank Mead and them were working on. Same exact concept. In fact, it must be, it must be the exact same thing in my opinion. It even says right here, it only takes a tiny amount of, of fuel to cause this to occur. And it says this could completely disrupt power generation industry and have wide ranging impacts. And it says, unfortunately, despite the progress, many questions still remain about this new reactor concept. Lockheed Martin initially said that their prototype might be available this year or next year. That was 2019. Now it's 2025. Where is this thing? By 2017, the schedule got pushed back to sometime in the mid-2020s, but they didn't offer any more time frame whatsoever. So you've got a magical fusion reactor, but you just have no, no public release of information about it, none at all, and there's just nothing about it now? Why? This is where the blue-pilled NPCs would go, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Guys, they're on, they're on, publicly, they're on version like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine. You really think it doesn't work? You think Lockheed Martin doesn't know what they're doing? No, it works. It definitely works. Uh, so here you go. Look at this. This is what we're dealing with inside the MH370 orbs. In fact, I'm not even sure there's a laser in front now. There might still be a laser. But I think they're using some kind of magnetic field configuration like this. A ring, a smaller ring inside of a bigger ring, cathode, anode. And then the center part is transparent. So that certain particles can shoot through it. So this is the basic design for it. And then the design, is because it's a tube, the air flows through and out the other way. That's why when we see in the MH370 videos, these dark lines before and after the orbs, that's why. This is why right here. This is why right here. Okay, and it, straight up, they start bragging right up to say this. It can be ten, one tenth the size of current fusion reactors. From the Lockheed Martin photographs of the confined fusion reactor, it shows similarities to a magnetic configuration known as cusp geometry, perhaps one known as picket fence. The images show a series of ring shaped electromagnets arranged in a row like curtain rails, curtain rings on a rail. Bingo. Exactly what I'm looking for, for what's inside the MH370 video orbs. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> if it is a picket fence, then the plasma would need to be confined along the axis running down the middle of the rings and the electromagnets produce a series of magnetic fields that bulge outward from the central plasma, a series of cusps. 
The effect of this is that if a charged particle near the axis moves outward, it starts to experience a magnetic field that pushes it back. This is gentle at first, but the further the particle strays from the axis, the more strongly it's pushed back towards the center. This makes the confined plasma less prone to instabilities. So then it talks about the cusp geometry, but this is where it gets really spicy. Lockheed's statements refer to combining the best parts of several configuration approaches. They didn't just take one. They took the best parts of several configuration approaches. Cowley thinks they may be using a technique called field-reversed configuration in which helical magnetic fields are induced in the plasma so that it confines itself. Yes. 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 Helically induced magnetic fields cause the plasma to confine itself. LFG, baby. LFG. Woo! FRCs, again, date back to the 50s and 60s, but they tend to be very short-lived, lasting on the order of one millisecond. They're probably trying to create an FRC inside of the picket fence. Exactly. And then he says, it does appear to be some sort of cusp geometry device, but more complicated than a picket fence. It also appears to have structure known as a magnetic mirror on either end. This acts as a magnetic plug to stop particles escaping along the axis of the device. Yeah! I got you. I got you, Lockheed Martin. That's the proof we needed. That's the proof we needed. Watch the orbs. Watch the orbs closely. We found them. It's Lockheed Martins. They're using this extremely specific fusion configuration. It allows them to lock off, to turn off one side of the orb. Let me show the other version. We need to see the version where it's easier to see. So look, you can only see it from behind right here. The line is only behind the orb right here because they've got it turned off so it's not sucking in the air yet. And then they turn it on right here. You can like see them turn it on where it's starting to suck in air from the front and it's still expelling air behind it. You can clearly see it. It's amazing. Look at that. You can see the exhaust coming out of the back and you can see it sucking in from the front. At the same time, there's no more exhaust behind it anymore. Why? Because they've pinched off the exhaust part. There's no exhaust coming from behind the orbs anymore. So whatever's coming in there, it's just accumulating. It's just accumulating. Look at it. There's no lines behind the orbs. You can still clearly see the lines in front of the orbs. Because they can control the magnetic field to block off the, the expelling exhaust. This is not alien technology. This is human technology, 100%. It appears to have electromagnetic coils made from superconductor inside the reaction vessel. If they were in that position in a working fusion reactor, the superconductor would be destroyed by the high energy neutrons that are the product of the fusion reactions. In other designs, that use high temperature superconductors have more than a meter of shielding. So they've figured out a way to protect the superconductors from the reaction that's happening right next to them. Researchers at MIT believe that this could be reduced to as low as 77 centimeters. Trust me, it can be reduced a lot lower than that. So this goes to show, right? This paragraph goes to show how far advanced Lockheed Martin is relative to what the public thinks is possible. It's their light years. Yeah, it has to be the heat exchange. The heat exchange is what's solving this problem. They're saying, well, the material should be getting destroyed. Well, they've controlled the temperature. How do I know they've controlled the temperature? Because I can see the orb is not white hot. That orb is like blue. That means that thing is relatively cold. That means whatever fusion reaction is happening there, either it's happening at a low temperature or they're able to suck that heat out of the reaction very quickly. 